Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. welcome back to my channel. This week, some research that I was involved in was published. It was called Possible Evidence for a Large-Scale Enhancement in the Lyman Alpha Forest Power Spectrum at Redshift Greater or Equal Than 4. It's a study where we looked at the Lyman Alpha Forest for signs of inhomogeneous reionization. The answer was a possibly, but what exactly does all that mean? Let's find out. According to the Big Bang Theory, the universe began as a singularity, a point of infinite density and temperature about 13.8 billion years ago. At that point, the universe was extremely hot and extremely dense, and it rapidly began to expand. And as this expansion continued, the universe also began to cool, cool enough so that subatomic particles like protons, neutrons and electrons could finally form. About 380,000 years later, with this continued expansion and cooling of the universe, these particles eventually combined to form neutral hydrogen atoms. And then for about 100 million years or so, the universe was shrouded in darkness as the neutral hydrogen absorbed all the light in the universe. There were no sources of light. This was called the Dark Ages, an era when the universe was practically invisible and pretty much impossible for astronomers like us to study. But then came the first stars and then galaxies that gradually lit the universe up again. As these early stars and galaxies emitted intense ultraviolet radiation, they ionized the hydrogen gas around them. They essentially stripped away their electrons and this created ionized bubbles of gas. Over time, these ionized bubbles grew and then merged together, eventually creating a fully ionized universe. This epoch was known as reionization. If reionization was homogeneous, it means that the ionization occurred uniformly throughout the universe, with no significant variations in the ionized gas density. However, if the reionization was inhomogeneous, it would mean that the ionization occurred in little patches, with some regions of space being ionized earlier than other parts. This could be caused by the uneven distribution of the first sources of ionizing radiation, those first stars. Determining whether or not reionization was homogeneous is therefore important for us to understand the early universe and the physical processes that occurred during that time. It also helps us to better interpret the observations of the early universe, such as the cosmic microwave background radiation. It can tell us about the formation and evolution of the first stars and galaxies and provide insights to the properties of the intergalactic medium, that's the space in between galaxies, and the distribution of neutral hydrogen gas there. As the universe continued to evolve, the pattern of ionized and neutral gas left behind by reionization could be observed through what we call the Lyman Alpha Forest. This is a pattern of absorption lines in the spectra of distant quasars. Remember, quasars are essentially galaxies that have an active, supermassive black hole at their center. The light from the distant quasar must pass through clouds of hydrogen gas in the intergalactic medium before it can reach us. And in doing so, it's absorbed by the neutral hydrogen gas. These clouds are much more common in the distant universe, so at very high redshifts. So at this place, this is where they make a very dense set of absorption lines that we call a forest. We know that there are not many big clouds of hydrogen, i.e. galaxies in the early universe, but there were many smaller clouds like dwarf galaxies or even smaller. In fact, most of the clouds in the Lyman Alpha Forest are even less massive than dwarf galaxies. But we can only see them from the absorption that they produce in the strongest line of the most abundant element, Lyman Alpha. Hence, it's called the Lyman Alpha Forest. The absorption lines seen in the quasar spectra correspond to the wavelengths of those Lyman Alpha photons that were absorbed by the intervening neutral hydrogen gas. 
This spectral signature contains observable properties that are linked to physical properties of the intergalactic medium. So these are things like its temperature, its density, its metallicity, as well as the processes that shape the distribution of matter in the early universe. To characterize the distribution of absorption lines in the Lyman Alpha Forest, we need to convert it into a 1D power spectrum of transmission flux. So this is essentially a function that tells us how much absorption there is at different scales or distances. But since the Lyman Alpha Forest is a highly stochastic phenomenon, we have to combine the signals of many quasar spectra and average out the random fluctuations to obtain a more robust estimate of the power spectrum. But once you have this, the power spectrum amplitude tells us the amount of neutral hydrogen there is in the early universe. Its shape at small scales tells us about the thermal evolution of the intergalactic medium. And most importantly, on large scales, the power spectrum is sensitive to spatial fluctuations in the thermal and ionization state of the intergalactic medium. And this potentially means that we can use it to tell us whether there was any inhomogeneous heating or ionization during the reionization epoch. So in our research, we showed that with simulations, it really is possible to detect this inhomogeneity using the 1D power spectra. And we applied the method to real observational data. What we found was a slight enhancement in the Lyman alpha forest pattern on large scales at redshifts z greater than or equal to four. This potentially could be a signature of inhomogeneous reionization. However, with the current data, the results are not so conclusive. Well, 2.7 sigma, so we're 99.3% confident, but generally scientists aren't happy until they get five sigma. Don't ask me why. That's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.